Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Krabby Boy, and today I have a follow-up to my last tier video, which is the top range abilities in RS3, follow-up from the melee abilities. I'll leave a link to that down in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, this one should be a little bit easier than the melee abilities. Uh, there's a lot less of them, uh, and a lot of them are pretty straightforward and pretty easy to talk about. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first we have Binding Shot. Now, Binding Shot is the you know the main basic stun for the range class, and immediately I kind of want to just throw it in A. Uh, stuns are very important in general. Uh, you know, stunning your opponent is very nice. Uh, it also binds in place, which is also good, especially for range, because you ideally want to stay far away from your target when you're ranging. Uh, you know, you're weak to melee, so being able to bind your target in place can give you some time to move away from your opponent and get into a more advantageous position where you can perform better as the range class. Uh, it's not broken, so it doesn't belong in S, but it is a very strong A, and it's definitely, I think this is where it's going to belong, and this will kind of set the standard for A, is a lot of abilities, even the basic abilities in range, they're all pretty good, uh, it's just some are a little broken, <laughs> uh, and some need a little help, or they're not that broken, but let's move on. Uh, the next one we have here is Bombardment. Now, Bombardment is definitely, unfortunately, on the weaker side of the thresholds. Uh, I do like that it is an AoE, um, which makes it very great for Slayer and just for general room clearing. Um, so it's not S. I think it might be A or B. I'm debating whether I want to put it in, in A, because... If I did like a mental note of what else I might put in A, I just don't know if Bombardment is that strong compared to some of the other thresholds that we have. I think if there was a lesser pool of thresholds, uh, which there was for a long time uh, with range, I would maybe throw it in A, but right now, um, as of today, I think I'm just going to have it in B. Uh, again, this might change as the list goes on. I might decide, you know what, it's a little bit too strong to be in B. It might belong in A. Uh, we'll see. Uh, next, we have Corruption Shot. Uh, <laughs> I love Corruption Shot. Uh, it's an awesome ability. One of the best upgrades in the game. I think it's an easy S tier. Uh, it's a bleed. And not just a bleed, but it spreads to other targets and it's great it's a late game kind of upgrade you you don't get it until you know you start going to raids but it's definitely one of the best i think it's probably the best ability to pick up first from raids especially given just how strong range is right now um so fantastic ability definitely s tier um so next we have dazing shot uh, Dazing Shot is a pretty staple ability for two-handed range. Uh, I don't use a lot of two-handed range lately. I'm uh, in the Ascension Crossbow camp for a little while until I save up some money. Um, but when I did have two-handed range uh, back before the Criminal Bolts took over and I actually had a Noxbow and uh, Decimation for a minute, uh, Dazing Shot is pretty good. I I think it's a pretty solid ability. It's definitely one you want to be using early in your DPS rotation. Um, definitely like one you fire off after all your bleeds and maybe stun if you need to. Uh, I think it belongs in A. It's a pretty staple ability. Pretty good. I think it goes there. Uh, and then following up with that, uh, I decided to pair Salt the Wound and Mutated Dazing Shot together because, well, I'll talk about them I don't really know how I want to talk about them, to be honest. It's, uh... So, I really like this ability. It's really good. I think Dazing Shot, like, the way they kind of ported a... You know, giving range their own version of Storm Shard and Shatter. I think it's pretty good, and I think it was very good for them to do it on an ability like Dazing Shot, which by itself is a pretty, you know, standard ability, and... 
I guess I should also mention uh, the great thing about Dazing Shot is the target suffers a accuracy debuff, which is nice. Uh, being able to dodge hits is cool. That's less food, potentially. Um, so they only made it better by adding it these adding these uh you know storm shards. So I think since the upgrade to the ability itself is just to apply the stacks for salt the wound, I'm going to put the upgrade in a with dazing shot because I think they're I think the upgrade is you know it's it's necessary for salt the wound. Um, but Salt the Wound, do I want to put Salt the Wound in S tier is kind of the problem. I, I don't know if I want to put it in S tier because my problem with it is if you're doing, you know, general Slayer or just fighting lower tiered mobs, you're not really going to be building up enough stacks to use this thing, or you might just want to be using other thresholds so as much as i like this i think it was like a nice upgrade to dazing shot i think it's strangely all going to go in a um i think the whole like the basic ability and the upgrade are totally fine they're great upgrade uh and they're definitely effective at places like nex uh araxor uh, I think even like Virago, even Raids is very helpful. Um, but it's nothing broken. I don't think it really needs to go up in S. Also, I didn't do A plus this time because there are much less abilities. Um, I think that shouldn't be a problem. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to keep all three of these in A. I think that's a pretty good spot. They're fantastic abilities. I've talked enough about them. Uh, and I think we should move on. So next we have Deadshot. Um, I did make a pretty good justification for overpower in my melee video in the sense that I like what Deadshot is. It's your entry level ultimate ability. Um, so it just introduces you to like, this is what an ultimate ability is going to be going to do. It's gonna consume all of your adrenaline, but you get this big, massively powerful hit uh, and Deadshot does have a few situational uses, even in the higher levels of PVM. I think it even has uses at Virago. I know it's a good ability to use at Hard Mode Zilliana. Um, and overall, like you, you can use this thing in a lot of places. It doesn't. It does get kind of power crept out by Death Swiftness later on, but it's not a bad ability. So I think I'm going to stick it in B. Um, Again, not terrible. Maybe it could come down. You could say it could come in the C um, because it does get kind of power crept out. But I think it's a fine ability. It does it does what it needs to do. Plus, it also benefits from ultimatums, which isn't the most popular ability, but it still has support, which is nice to see. All right, I took a big sip of water for this one. <laughs> Uh, next, we have Death Swiftness. I think no one is going to argue with that. Uh, I think Death Swiftness might be the best range ability in the game. It's a fantastic ability. It is essential <laughs> to have in the highest levels of PVM. And it is everyone's go-to um, you know, DPS starter. When it's time to drop all your damage, you are the first thing you're doing is dropping Death Swiftness, much like Berserk and Sunshine. Um, it's a great effective use of your ultimate. It's just gonna buff all your damage over time and it's gonna make all your thresholds better. It's gonna, you know, you're doing more damage. It's the best and most effective cost of your adrenaline. Um, I think the only thing I can say downside wise is you know you are locked into place with it so you are you know kind of forced to stay in that general area while you're in your death swiftness which could be tricky if you have a boss that does something like creation leviathan where they're applying something on the floor or ambassador 
but as long as you're careful you can kind of maneuver around it if you're skilled enough you can you know you know where to position your death swiftnesses uh especially at like astalarn you know you know where to place it so that you can dodge the rain uh and that just comes with time and with practice learning where to stand is very important when you're ranging and this is kind of an ultimate that can really benefit if you know where to exactly to stand where you're ranging because you just drop this thing down it makes all your thresholds better okay so next we have demoralize um demoralize isn't a bad ability i definitely see it get thrown in some uh into some rotations um but i know it's not the most popular ability it's not not really necessary or a, a you know a basic standard ability that everyone knows like s or a is it b tier probably i think b tier might be a good spot it could go in a if, if it if it does belong in a you know definitely let me know in the comments if it belongs there but um from my own personal experience uh it's a not a bad ability uh, also, you know, being able to push your target back is nice. You know, range does have a bleed in fragmentation shot. Uh, so it does synergize well with that. But um, if you're fighting at maximum range, it can be annoying because it could force you to move, have to move forward to keep engaging your enemy. Um, but it also could be nice for keeping your target pushed back uh, if you need to keep the gap between you and your opponent far away. Uh, or like if your uh, stuns are off cooldown. Um, actually, wait, doesn't it share the? I, I I don't remember if it shares the cooldown with binding shot. It might. It it. Oh, that's right. I think it does. Uh, in that case, um, yeah, B tier absolutely then. Uh, because binding shot is just a little bit more effective, and you don't always have to push your target back. So yeah, that's fine. Um. Now we have escape. I feel really bad for escape because surge and bladed dive are just such awesome abilities. But then you have escape and it's like, no one really uses this one. <laughs> um, I think it's not a bad ability. I, I The idea is pretty simple. It makes sense for like with the range class. Like, okay, you just need to get out of dodge, but you still want to be able to face your opponent so that you can keep doing damage but the problem is is there's not a lot of places to use this compared to surge and bladed dive um most people just switch to bladed dive if they need to move around um or they just surge or turn and surge to where they need to go um i guess there are like a few times where you do want to specifically escape I can't really think of any off the top of my head. Um, QBB, maybe? But I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I kind of want to stick this in D. But that might be too mean. It, it, might, it might go up to C. But truth be told, like, there's not a lot of reason to use Escape specifically over Surge and Bladed Dive. Um, Surge also is farther, and Bladed Dive, you have the precision accuracy. And Escape, the only advantage you have is that you keep facing your opponent, which isn't too terrible. I mean, turning around isn't too bad. Um, like, I would think at Varric Lith, you know, escaping, uh, you know, dodging the dragon swooping in, or dodging the tornadoes. Um, I think if I was deciding, you know, oh, should I surge or should I escape? I think either way, I think surge is fine. And if surge is fine, then there's no real reason to use both of them. Especially when you could also be bladed diving around. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep it down in D. Maybe I'll move it up to C. If it's like the only thing in D tier, um, I might move it up to C, but I don't know. I I don't really like escape. And I think, does escape need to be buffed? <laughs> I want to say no, because range is already so 
so strong that I don't think it needs anything else getting buffed. But maybe if it did give like a small buff, like maybe if it gave like an accurate, like a like a one percent or like a small percent accuracy buff or something like that, maybe it would get some use. But it would only be for range. Um, though I guess like it would be nice because you know melee has bladed dive, but. Surge is essentially a all-class ability, despite it being a magic ability. So, it could be nice, you know, give range its own use for escape. But, again, range is also already so strong that I don't think it really needs anything like this right now. Maybe in the future, though. Um, so next we have Fragmentation Shot. Uh, Fragmentation Shot is Bleed. Uh, fragmentation shot also like slaughter uh, it does more damage if you move your target I think it's a great ability I think you want to be using it pretty often I don't think it's broken um, so but it's definitely a tier it really is the only effective bleed for for range um, and a basic bleed you know like combustion basic bleed that you can use often and walk is pretty good. It's, uh, you know, I, I believe it's not as strong as Slaughter, but Slaughter is also a threshold ability. So, fantastic ability. You want to be using it often. Definitely A tier. Um, I could see maybe an argument for it being an S tier because of it being able to do pretty good damage, but I think if it was a threshold, I might put it in S tier, but. Nah, I think it's fine in A tier for right now. Alright, uh, I'm actually gonna move this guy over because I wanna talk about uh, we'll get to you know we'll we'll get to this guy, don't worry, but I wanna do ricochet first actually. Um Ricochet is gr great. You know, it's an AoE ability. Uh helps out a lot with Slayer. Um it also has its own, you know, support with Karaming. Um its only drawback is that it doesn't really perform very well on single targets, but that's okay. Uh, when you're on a Slayer task, you know, your go-to abilities are gonna be this and Corruption Shot and even Bombardment if you can work it in. Um, definitely A tier. Uh, definitely one of the best, one of the better uh, range abilities. And then, as if Ricochet wasn't great, they went ahead and gave us this thing, which, good lord. Um, where to even begin with Greater Ricochet? <laughs> um, S tier, first of all. Again, I don't think anyone's going to argue with this going in S tier. Uh, so what makes Greater Ricochet so powerful is it essentially takes the one weakness of Ricochet, which, as I said, is it's not as effective against one target. What Greater Ricochet does is... When you shoot Ricochet at a target, for every target that Ricochet doesn't go out and seek, so, you know, by default, I think it's two, um, for every target that it doesn't hit, it will do 10 to 50% more damage per target that was not found. And in baseline, or I think it's two to three, uh, so in baseline, that's not too big, but what happens is when you put Karaming 4 on and you increase the number of targets to 7, that's a potential for 350% more damage. That's huge. That is a big upgrade to an ability. And it makes the ability effective in single target damage. It's super effective at single target damage because it's doing so much damage. Um... And it's still just as effective at AoEs because you're not often hitting, you know, seven targets and not benefiting from it at all. Um, so if you are, or sorry, if you're not, then the target that you are firing Greater Ricochet at will take considerably more damage and you're still damaging everything around it. So one of the best, if not the most broken abilities in range right now. Um, 
I don't know why they put this thing in, to be honest, for range. Range was already so strong when this thing came out. I think if this thing came out for chain on magic instead of range, it would be a much different story. But, um, you know, Greater Ricochet, fantastic ability, fantastic upgrade. Uh, one of the best upgrades in general, in, in PVM in general. Uh, so, yep, definitely S tier. I, I think it belongs absolutely in S tier. So, moving on, we have Incendiary Shot. Now, kind of like Deadshot, um, and I mentioned this a lot in my Melee video, it is competing with Death Swiftness for an ultimate spot. Incendiary Shot does have a few, uh, you know, a few good uses. It does have, like, an AoE... It does have the crit generation, um, but truth be told, like it, you more often than not using Death Swiftness over this thing. Um, it definitely has its uses. You can definitely use this in a fair number of spots. Uh, again, hard mode Zeliana can work there. Um, it could also work at a boss where if you're moving around a lot and you need to you maybe want to fire off like a hard hit but you don't want to sit down and uh put down death swiftness or maybe you need to just get like a hard hit in very fast you might want to use that to quickly finish off like a section or a phase um whereas death dead shot is you know it's over time so it might it's not as immediate but incendiary shot is like one big massive hit which definitely has its uses, but I don't think it's anything super broken or essential, so B tier seems like an okay spot for it. Um, so now we have Needle Strike. Uh, Needle Strike is a very, very, very good ability. Uh, it's definitely what you want to be using probably as often as you can if you're using Dual Wield, um, kind of like Dazing Shot. But I want to put it in A tier, but... Truth be told, I, I think it honestly belongs in S tier. Um, Needle Strike is just extremely good. Uh, I mean, the ability to... Uh, I was uh, making sure that it was uh, what I had. Uh, yeah, sorry. The, the ability to increase the damage on your next ability is awesome uh so you ideally want to use this you know as your first ability when you go into your combo so you drop death swiftness then you needle strike and then you could you know drop a threshold or go into your next ability you know you want to be using this thing probably as often as you can when you're dual wielding um and yeah i think it belongs in s tier maybe it maybe it can go in a tier um I don't know though. It, it, I mean, it's uh, being able to buff the damage of your next hit is a very awesome perk to have on an ability. It is restricted to dual wield, but honestly, considering how strong bolts are, um, with a lot of people are using like dual wield ascensions and the like, um, I think this is fine for S tier. Um, not to say the dazing shot is bad, but I think. If I had to compare between the two of them, I think I would much rather have Needle Strike than Dazing Shot, just to be able to do more DPS. Um, now we have the basic uh, damage ability. Uh, you know, I kind of want to have this uh, Piercing Shot in B tier. Um, it does synergize with the stuns, so it, maybe it, it goes in A tier, but... Truth be told, I mean, it it, it kind of is just that. And compared to how how awesome everything else is that's already in A tier with, you know, stuns and all the dazing shot shenanigans and the only bleed and then ricochet, I think it just doesn't really hit that power level or effectiveness level. So I kind of want to put it in B uh, for right now. Maybe it could go in A. Um, because it does synergize, it, it, you can use it often, it synergizes well with tight bindings, um, but 
everything else that's kind of in A is just so good. Um, it just kind of doesn't quite hit the effectiveness factor just yet. And then everything in S tier is just pretty broken. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it in B tier for right now. Uh, next, we have Rapid Fire. Um, rapid Fire... Uh... S or A, I... A tier, maybe. Um... I don't think it's anything... It, it's a lot of damage, though. Like, it's definitely one of the, like, biggest damage. You know what? Yeah, I think it's an S tier ability. Um... It, it just does a lot of damage. You know, it's the... As you guys know, it's, the, it's like Asphyxiate for range. Um... Except it's not channeled, it's just... Uh, actually, no, I believe it is channeled. Uh, but, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it does do, like, a, a ridiculous amount of damage. I mean, Snapshot can kind of hit higher than it. Um, and Tight Bindings can hit higher than it with Flanking. Or I mean, maybe even without fl uh, actually, yeah, it kind of needs flanking, um, and that's but that's assuming like you get really low rolls with it. I'm just trying to decide if I want to put it in A tier. Um, <laughs> I I feel like I'm pausing a lot in this video, and I, I I promise it's more just because I'm trying to decide where I want to put these because it's very close. I I. I think, you know what, yeah, I'm going to put it in S tier. It's a very effective ability. Um, you're doing a lot of damage with this thing in the in the time that you have it active. Um, I think it's definitely up there with Snapshot and Tight Bindings as like the some of the kings and, and Shadow Tendrils, but we'll get to those. Um, so yeah, I think it could go in S tier, but again, it probably could go in a tier considering like the rest of the stuff in s tier is like really broken stuff i don't know if it's ah, i don't know <laughs> um you know what i'm gonna leave it in a maybe i'll come back and put put it in s a lot of these thresholds are a little bit finicky with how strong they are um between s and a but maybe i'll move it back up i i, I want to move on and Maybe we can come back to it once we start getting into the rest of the thresholds. Um, so now we have Route. Um, route, I think, is kind of... It's the same situation as Demoralize. I want to put it in B. Not a terrible ability. Um, but just... I think Tight Bindings is just much more effective. Um, but being able to move your target back does have situational uses. It does synergize well with Fragmentation Shot. Uh, so B tier is fine. Well, honestly, I even want to put it in C tier because I feel like it's even less popular than Demoralize. Because Demoralize is a basic. You can at least use this one a little bit more often. But there are already a lot of... Uh, there was a time where there weren't that many uh, range, abil range threshold abilities. Um, like before Shadow Tendrils, before Route. Um, you know, the, the only ones you really had were rapid fire snapshot and tight bindings and route is wouldn't be bad if it wasn't for the fact that a lot of there's a lot more competition now for thresholds so i think there are just a lot more that are better than it it's not the worst thing in the world like it's not as bad as escape but as far as the combat abilities go i think it's definitely on the lower side of things if it does have like more uses than i think um again please let me know but personal experience i don't use this ability ever um so yeah i think i'm gonna leave it in c next we have shadow tendrils uh i really like shadow tendrils they're what i start all of my combos with after i drop death swiftness um you know, I'll, I'll Vigor, Death Swiftness, and then Shadow Tendril, Excalibur, and then Excalibur if I need to, and then usually go into Rapid Fire. Um, I think it's a 
it's a really hard hit like you can really easily hit a 12k on it but it is risky you do take a pretty big chunk of life points but i think sacrificing life points is a pretty okay cost for people especially with just how easy it is to safe and heal back with blubbers and ceridum and brews and rock tails and sailfish and all that jazz um so very effective threshold very powerful threshold i think s tier is a great ability Blech. i think s tier is a great tier uh place for it to be so snapshot it's kind of a rapid fire situation where i it's a very strong threshold ability, but it's nothing super broken. Um, you will consistently hit pretty hard with this thing, if you, especially if you're in like a Death Swift disc with Reckless. You could be easily hitting 9Ks even more with this. Um, if you're buffed, you could be probably hitting even like upwards of 210Ks almost, if you're lucky. Um, but without any buffs to be hitting like almost in the 9k range at a i think is pretty good um i guess maybe i could have like an a plus tier and if i did have an a plus tier i think rapid fire and snapshot would definitely go um would go there but they're nothing like super broken i think at least compared to everything else that's in here um, I put Shadow Tendrils above it because Shadow Tendrils is pretty consistently, it's a consistently hard hit if you land it at the cost of your life points, um, followed by another hit, I believe. Um, over two to, yeah, over two to five. Um, so I think that it's a little bit more effective than Rapid Fire, even with the life point cost. Um, but yeah, I think these two belonging in A for right now would be fine. But if I did have A+, plus, it would definitely be these two. Next we have Snipe. Uh, I really like Snipe. I think it's a great basic ability. Um, it's also a really cool, like, unique to range ability. Um, you know, you line up that perfect shot, kind of, and then you, you fire it, but it takes like a few seconds. Uh, that's perfect. It's what range is, is kind of all about. Ability like this is great for it. Um, it is very powerful. I don't think it's anything broken to be an S tier. You can definitely do like some cheeky things with this. Like getting a nice res off at Rax is pretty good. Um, hmm. But I think A tier is probably good. Like I, like I said in the beginning of this video, a lot of the range abilities are pretty good. There's very few bad ranged abilities. Um, and range itself is just so strong right now. Uh, I think it's fine being an A tier. Type bindings. Tight Bindings does have flanking support, and flanking support is huge in PVM. So I want to put this in S because of that. You can do a lot of damage with Tight Bindings with flanking on. Um, and plus being able to stun and bind is nice. Um, hmm. Now I'm kind of thinking, you know, with the thresholds, it's it's kind of hard to like decide what to do with these thresholds because they're very a lot of them are just very solid. Like rapid fire and snapshot are just solid. The type bindings has its support. Um, salt the wound is like honestly not even looking as impressed. I don't know why salt the wound would even be in the same tier as snapshot and rapid fire I'm, I'm even tempted to move that down to b um okay you know what i think i've decided something i am going to move salt the wound down to b my justification for that is i like what they did with 
adding the mutated dazing the the adding the puncture stack to the dazing shot that's an okay upgrade and i like that i think it works it's not too broken it it it's perfectly okay for it to be on dazing shot however salt the wound is i don't use it as often as rapid fire and snapshot um so for the purposes of that i think i want to put it a little bit less than them still a good ability and definitely still something i want to use even at the higher levels of pvm but there are already such fantastic range thresholds that there's just a lot of competition for adrenaline there's only so many abilities you can get off in one death swiftness and you want to use the best ones you can first those are ideally going to be shadow tendrils uh tight bindings with flanking rapid fire and snapshot um, and then a snipe if you can get it in fragmentation shot um, if you can get it if you can get it in and you want to you know detonate your stacks that's great but again you're only using that at certain bosses you're not just using it as often as you are these abilities which is why i want to rank them higher so i think that's okay for it to come down into b and yeah tight bindings in s tier it's got that flanking support. Very great ability. Um, now we have Unload. And I did talk about this in Melee. How this ability and the other, you know, <laughs> the other ultimate abilities like Frenzy. Uh, they just need a little help because there's, they face stiff competition from Death Swiftness and Berserk and Sunshine. And... Even in range, um, I feel like the other two ultimate abilities are better in certain instances. Um, I mean, you unlock this thing pretty late. I, I think, actually, if, if I remember correctly. So you do get this thing before Death Swiftness. Like four levels. By like four levels. So four levels later... Um, this ability is totally invalidated um, because you want to just be using Death Swiftness. So the entirety of your time going through range, you know, when you get to a certain point, uh, when you get to 81, you know, you're going to be using Unload or Incendiary Shot if you want to use an ultimate, or I guess even Dead Shot would be total, just as acceptable. But then as soon as you hit 85, you're using Death Swiftness. Um, unload needs to do more than it currently does uh, to be as effective as the other ultimates. Uh, Deadshot is higher than it because Deadshot has a specific role as an entry level ultimate ability, and it fulfills that role totally fine, just like Overpower does. Incendiary Shot has the critical hit chance, and Death Swiftness is just, well, Death Swiftness. So, Unload, unfortunately, has to go down in C tier. Um, and looking at the list, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks pretty okay. Uh, definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. I think if I had an A-plus tier, uh, that might make things a little bit less crowded, especially an A. Um, might be something I take into consideration when I do Magic. I didn't really think I needed it when I did this tier, but I think I might put it back in when I do magic might and hey i might just not end up using it who knows uh but anyways thank you guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed uh and let me know what you think uh would you change any of these abilities how would you buff the abilities that are lower in tiers you know maybe would escape <laughs> would escape get a buff sometime soon but that's gonna do it for this video i'm crappy boy hope you all have a great day stay safe and i'll see you all in the next one Talk to you later.